team this year to get to 20 wins at 20 and 1. Eli and Kurtz will square off at center circle to get this one underway. Tip the Abbey off the head of Roberson. Out of bounds. It'll be Tulsa ball. I think you see the Bulldogs come out man to man, and, and I think that Tulsa will run the exact same defense. Hands on their feet. Not going to find many empty seats for this Tulsa likes to run their offense through the high post. Harrington got Porter up in the air. This is Abney with a rebound. And Harrington is shooting over 50% from both inside and outside the arc. And 53% of three point range is killed to the nation. Alexander has it stolen. Ball taken away by Tony Hurd. Hurd lays it up and in. And that's one thing that Nelson does extremely well is their defense to offense transition. That was a steal, and you can see Coley was out even before the ball was stolen. Inside the Rovers, he throws it, gets it to Alexander. Sure. Alexander hustles for the rebound, but then it comes off again to Tony Hurd. Bob inside goes off the fingertips of Kurtz. Porter comes out with him. Alexander. Well, there will be short for the foul. Foul on the shot by Greg Harrington. That'll be his first first team foul. I think, the, Tulsa. I think the Bulldogs caught a break on that one because actually he fouled him on the drive. He put his shoulder down into him. If they, uh, you see it here, you can see right there, you can see there's contact. And then he hits him on the arm. So, actually, the Bulldogs caught a break because Courtney's shooting 80% from the free throw line. They should be taking it out of bounds. Alexander for the first point of the game, which means the fans can now sit down here at South Arena. Average of 25 points a game, five rebounds. And if you have played in enough games, that would lead the country. Got playing 75% of the game. Right. 75% of the year. He's very close to that. He's 13 out of 19. I believe. Two two ball game. Really a steal by Roberson. Got to get up by here. It's so good. The out of bounds goes for State. The Bulldogs have a chance to take the lead for the first time. 18 09 remaining in the first half. Terrence Roberson tried to go over the top of the screen, which they don't want him to do. It's forced Melvin Eli to come out, but Melvin really put good pressure on that. I think that's what goes the best. Eli, very successful inside during the rice game, hooks it over Kurtz. Trying to get the bounce, rebound Coley. Coley's going to play him one on one, and I'm going to try to double team Melvin Eli. Strong rebound goes off of Coley. Out of bounds, plays no state basketball. Still a 2 2 game. But you could see the vengeance that Coley attacks the glass with there. The Bulldogs are going to have to do a better job of locking out. Coley leads the team in rebounds and steals. He needs 12 points tonight to get to 1,000 for his career. He's already over 500. Bump, 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 bump. Alexander has now two points on a free throw, and now he has two more. And that's something Ralph that the Bulldogs put in just for Tulsa. Normally he goes out to the ball side corner, the corner where Roberson went. That time, for the Tulsa game, they gave him a chance to go either way. Nearly another steal by Roberson as a pass from Bird intended for Harrington. Roberson knocked it out of bounds. 25 on the shot clock, Tulsa basketball. And if that's really getting into it, Demetrius Porter is doing a real nice job pressuring out on the guard, independent of who he's guarding at the point. Offensive foul on Tulsa. It's going to be on Coley. And I'll tell you why they had a foul on there is because of the Fresno State, State scouting report. When, when Tulsa goes to that 1-4 high and they hit the post, they backdoor on the one side, and then the point guard is going to come off on what they call a fade. And Courtney Alexander knows this. He tries to get through. The only way Coley can screen is to move. Two team fouls on Tulsa. Inside is happy. 
gets the bounce. Nice reverse layup by Abney. Six unanswered points for the Bulldogs. At the time, Alexander came out to the ball side. They tried to cheat out to help because he got screened. Larry Abney slipped the screen, got the ball inside on a nice pass from Terrence Roberson. Away by Roberson, the pass intended for Kurtz. Terrence Roberson has gotten his hand on three balls now in the first three and a half minutes. And, and when the Bulldogs get a lot of what they call deflections, and that's what they are, they play a lot better, uh, get a lot better result defensively. Bird gets it in to Hill. This scene on the shot clock, and a foul on Hill as Roberson hits the deck. And like we said, Ralph Roberson's not 100% physically, but they threw the ball up and the energy from the crowd. He's playing as, as good at the defensive end as you can play right now. Great position by Terrence Roberson. Three team fouls on Tulsa. Roberson loses it on the way up. Eli hustles to save it. Great leap by Alexander. Abbey. Can't get it to go. That was a really nice look by Courtney uh, Alexander. For the Bulldogs are pounding the Golden Hurricane. Kurtz inside. Good step, but maybe offensive interference. Yeah, right. What he did was he jumped up and he really gets up in the air. He held on to the right side and tipped it from the left. Right there, you can see him holding on to the backboard. You're not allowed to do that. Coley with the violation, wave off basket. We have a timeout on the floor with 15-59 remaining. The Bulldogs lead it 6-2. In the next 30 years, the population of the Earth will double to nearly 12 billion people. It will take 450 trillion pounds of food to meet the demand. This is agriculture's challenge in the 21st century. A challenge to be met by e-commerce. The AgZone.com, the critical key to a worldwide solution. Designed by agriculture for agriculture. The AgZone.com, providing e-commerce services. Exposure worldwide while cutting your costs. The AgZone.com, everything under one roof. Dot Shocks opens their doors for Furniture Sale 2000. From Elite, the all-leather sofa chair and love seat, only $19.99. From Bassett's Bedroom Collection, this beautiful queen sleigh bed is just $10.99. Our exclusive three-piece living room set with choice of chair is just $10.99. Oh, and use your Dot Shocks charge card and make no payments until July 2000. The Furniture Sale 2000, now at Dot Shocks. Dot Shocks in Manchester, Fashion Fair, and Visalia. It's the right team at the right time. Join Kristen Hoke and Eric Alvarez for the Valley's only primetime weekend. The KMPH 10 o'clock news tonight on your station. Bulldog basketball on Fox 26 is brought to you in part by TheEggZone.com, by Carl's Jr., Big Juicy Burgers, and get into your Northern California Chrysler Plymouth dealer. It's the new place to be and the only place to buy. Sunday night at 8. 8 is enough for Apu and his wife on The Simpsons. Then at 8.30, Malcolm discovers he is different from the rest of his dysfunctional family on the hilarious new comedy, Mountain in the Middle, only on APH Box 26. So far, Tom's team has been tenacious on defense, scored six unanswered points. And as the early lead, the crowd behind the Bulldogs, Fresno State basketball out of bounds. That's 20 percent, 40 percent. And we talked about the three seniors had to be a big game. Courtney Alexander for Larry Abney, two. Tom Jones, great defensive. And Abney already with four rebounds in the first four minutes. Rovers in the long three. That's taken short out of the air by Kurtz. That was a little deep. Layup for Tony Hurd, 6 4 game. That's a real nice walk by Kurtz. Very good passer for a big guy. Six hundred and four that goes by Kurtz. Defended well by Kurtz as we kick it out to Alexander. Kurtz's loss will stay behind him in body. They got a good shot. They got a nice offensive rebound. Coach from the top of the three-point line to give Tulsa the lead. 
Kirk will shoot those, but he won't shoot them very often. I mean, he's only one for nine for the year, now two for ten. Five unanswered points now for Tulsa. And a foul will be called against Fresno State at the other end. Melvin Eli will pick up his first. That is where uh, the Bulldogs the Bulldogs start their two wings beneath the two posts and come off the post screen. Into the game for Tulsa, you saw number 33, David Shelf. He's a, a transfer, a JC transfer from Independence the college, but he's also the leading scorer for the team, even though he doesn't start. Right, he doesn't start, and he's the only new player to the rotation this year. Travis Demandy is in for Fresno State. He replaces Terrence Overson. That's how big pulling on defense. That's a tough matchup for Demandy. Especially when the ball goes up. Kurtz. And it blocks, but a foul with the body by Eli. That's two quick fouls on Melvin Eli. It's all good right now. Yeah, well, let's take a look at it. Um, well, that's a tough angle. I don't think you're going to see it much. All ball there. Yeah, it was all ball above. Here, I mean... Boy. Yeah, well, the call is made. Uh, he has such a bad angle on it. It was a tough... It was tough for him to make that call. And in terms of bodying, Kurtz is bodying much more when Eli gets the ball at the other end. So we'll see if that's the way the game's going to be called. Well, I would say if anything, Kurtz initiated the, uh, the contact there. Kurtz just a 66% free throw shooter. Going to miss them both unless he gets a bounce. He does it. Rebound tipped out and it goes to her. Foley for three. Looks good. He is good. That's Eric a bad Foley. possession right there. That's a four-point possession, and it should have been one. Here comes a trap. Elon off the glass, rattles it home. The Bulldogs worked about 20 minutes against the trap yesterday, and that's exactly what they were doing to the scout team. They learned their lesson well. Mitchell inside and a foul called away from the ball. That was a moving screen. They, they, they actually ran a pick and roll, and what happened was Courtney Alexander went behind the screener, and as he went behind the screener, he rolled. Uh, Shelton rolled, and it looked like he was moving on the screen, so that's where the foul came from. Shelton picks up his first four team fouls on the Golden Hurricane. 10-8, Tulsa lead. Full quarter off. Pallas throws it up and in. This is a game of, of two point guards really pressuring each other, and I think you're going to see uh, they're going to have to break each other down off the dribble because they're doing a real good job of pressure, as you saw there. The Coley came out. Yeah, like Coley came out because of Porter's pressure. The ball was picked up in a center jump circle. Uh, Demanby really guarded well on the denial, and uh, Coley, if he had caught the ball, probably would have been out of bounds. Tony Hurd comes out for Tulsa. Marcus Hill back in, number 31, for the Hurricane. 10-10 tie. Alexander trying to give the Bulldogs the lead. In and out, rebound Eli. Loses it, and he took it down to the floor. Harrington goes behind the back, scored by Edward. This should be interesting. A race with Shelton, lays it up and in. For a guy six eight and your power forward first, you have the presence of mind when Harrington went behind his back to go for that steal and then to be able to take the ball 50 feet short. I mean, with four, Bulldogs lead by two. And that's going to be a foul on Demandy. He got Hill with the body. Yeah, what happened was the ball went inside to Kurtz, and, and Travis Demandy just opened up to help. And as he did, uh, Hill went to the basket. As he tried to recover on the, on the uh, throw back out, he got him with the body. Demandy picks up his first foul. Tark gets Nick Urban into the game at point guard for Demetrius Porter. Urban always brings some excitement to the game. Harrington. The ball. No good. Picked up. Taken by Abney. And he's fouled by Harrington. Harrington couldn't get out of the way. Larry Not Abney off balance. Yeah, that was what happened was Larry Abney came down on one foot, and Harrington had to be right near him and, and just bumped him. We'll take a look at it, see if Abney hops or if Harrington does hit him. 
Oh, that's why he came down on one foot. Because Harrington had it caught. I think they might have called a tee on Bill Self. Two fouls on Harrington. Bulldogs going to shoot free throw. I think what you have here, uh, Ralph, you know, the officials are assigned by the conference a supervisor prior to the season. And I don't know that, uh, I know that the, the crew that the Bulldogs had down at TCU was as big time a crew as you're ever going to get. They thought that was going to be, you know, the big game. I don't know that they thought this was going to be as big a game. And you do not have as veteran a crew on this game as we've seen in Selwyn Arena and on the road. Alexander converts both free throws, giving the Bulldogs a 14-10 lead. He has six in the game. And you wonder how, uh, how that affects a team. Of course, the Bulldogs had the ball anyway on the foul, so it's only two free throws. Hill taking it coast to coast after the rebound. He's going to go over. Sit down and roll it off the basket. No, I think they gave him the basket. Did they count it? Yeah, I think they said, yeah, he's oh, they do the count the basket. basket. And I'll tell you, I think, I think it's a good call. It's definitely a good call because I think the ball's away before he hits Nick Irvin. They might have gotten away with one here because it looks like Nick moves a little bit. As one foot's planted, his other one's moving, but he had pretty good position. And I'll tell you, if you take a hit like that, you deserve to get a charge. So back at the other end, Fresno State already is in the bonus. That means Nick Irvin will shoot free throws. And this is uncharted waters for the Bulldogs. They, they seldom get to the bonus this early. With 12-18 remaining in the first half. Irvin misses the front end of a one and one. He's just a 66% free throw shooter. And started out the year, I think, making his first eight or nine in a row. Shelton gets up in the air and draws the foul. Abney will pick it up. Shelton will shoot two. And what happened there was Shelton ran down the floor. Larry Abney ran with him. And Shelton just posted him. Larry ran alongside of him. The Bulldogs want their post players to stay on top so they can front the post player. And what happened, Larry got caught running side by side. Shelton did a real nice job. He's a big, strong guy. Posted up in the lane. They did a real, real good job of finding him. And then he just got Larry up in the air. Shelton, a 79% free throw shooter this season, gets first of two. Dante Swanson checking into the game for Tulsa. He'll replace Eric Coley. He's a seventh man. He, he's not uh, not putting up quite the numbers or getting the time that everyone else is. But uh, I think Bill Self feels like with a game uh, of this magnitude on the road, you're going to need to rest your guys maybe a little bit more. Swanson, a freshman out of Oklahoma. Averaging about three minutes a game. Shelton hits them both, and we are tied at 14 with 12 10 to go. Irvin has it knocked away from behind by Swanson, and he has a breakaway at the other end. Dante Swanson, the freshman. Has an impact as soon as he comes into the game. And that is probably something that they did see in the scouting report. They probably said that, you know, when Nick Irvin puts the ball behind his back, you can't go after him. Now they're trying to trap. That forced another turnover. Four pass, ball out of bounds to Tulsa. So Fresno State has lost a little bit of the momentum and the lead. We have a timeout on the floor, 11.44 remaining here in the first half. A two-point lead now for Tulsa. We'll be right back. Stay with us. This isn't just another vineyard. It's an international business operation. This isn't just another farmer driving his tractor. It's a businessman with a capital investment. This is the San Joaquin Valley, the nation's number one agricultural center. And for over 80 years, Valley and Fresno Madera Farm Credit have helped make dreams come to life. From one generation to the next, Valley and Fresno Madera Farm Credit, our roots are in agriculture. How do you improve the all-new, full-size V8 Toyota Tundra? Simple. Just add a little more steel. Toyota Tundra. Motor Trend. Truck of the Year. During Toyota's National Truck Celebration, you can now buy a Tacoma 4x2 with 5.9% financing for 60 months. Get your Tacoma 4x2 at this rate or a special lease at your Central Valley Team Toyota dealer. 
Hey, beer mine. Coors Light. Are you scared? Nervous? Crowds make you nervous. Beer's cold. It was frost brewed. Okay, got it. You're uh, climbing a ladder. No, you're climbing a mountain. Oh, yeah, because it's uh, born in the Rockies. <laughs> Delivered by mines. That's very funny. That's, that's very funny. Just give me the beer. Check this out. Keep the change. <laughs> Fans, tickets are still on sale for the WAC 2000 Championship Basketball Tournament hosted by Fresno State here at Salad Arena March 8th through the 11th. $125 all-session passes for the 14 games. Men's and women's are available now while they last. Call 278-DOGS. We have perhaps the third meeting of the year at that point between Fresno State and Tulsa. Bulldogs certainly hope that they're in the championship game. Coach Self picked up a technical foul already in this game. And you'll notice that the uh, Hurricanes went from one of five shooting to six of 11. So the Bulldogs have to tighten up their defense. But beyond the three point line, Hill no good. Here comes Porter. That was a set play called out of the timeout. Back on! Wow, Alexander too high. From Urban, that yeah, was a good look. I just, he just couldn't, he couldn't quite get that one. That was a little too much. That's something you're going to have in a, in a game like this. You, you, adrenaline's going. I think it just been a little too high. Turnovers are even at six of East. Brandon Kurtz goes to the Tulsa bench, and the Dogs have had turnovers. I think each of their, their last three possessions. Richard freshman Kevin Johnson, the 34 replacement, six seven, 215 pound. Put up and in right away by Johnson. And that's what they also run with uh, with their big guys is they screen with one and then roll it and then go high low. That's just the biggest lead for either team. Four. Alexander cuts it in. And that's another thing the Bulldogs put in for this game is posting up Courtney Alexander. We haven't seen that this year, but the Dogs felt like he's going to have a, a size advantage over the uh, people that are guarding him, so they went to uh, posting him up. Now look at Alexander play defense. And forces the turnover. And actually, actually Hill was trying to... Uh, Hill was trying to call a timeout. That was that was terrific defense from Courtney Alexander. He seems to have his uh, brought his A game with them at both ends. Exactly. At the offensive end, he scored eight of Fresno State's 16 points. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Two point deficit facing the Bulldogs. Alexander throws it inside, and nobody there. Shelton intercepts. But he anticipated Melvin Eli slipping that screen. For three. Third no good. Rebound. Last touch by Fresno State. It'll be Tulsa ball under the basket. 10-12 remaining. And early in, and, and before the game, we talked about precious gems, you know, the possessions. The Bulldogs have played several loose possessions so far, and it could come back to haunt them. Shelton for three. Rebound comes off to Harrington. Came all the way up to the three-point line. And we talked about bouncing back and rebounding, and that's also hurting. Coley. This is Hurd. Bounces inside the shelf. Nice move. Coley tips it, knocks it out of bounds. Boy, Coley skied for the rebound, got a hand on it, but couldn't control it. Bulldog ball trailing 18-16 with 9.42 remaining. Coley came out of nowhere. Jerry wants to talk about this. He doesn't like the fact that they're they're running their offense. They run very good offense, and they uh, they get they have unselfish guys that they look to get the ball inside. And if they don't have a shot inside, kick out for three. It's not a full timeout called by Fresno State with 9:39 remaining. Bulldogs leading and rebounding, 10 to 9, but trailing on the scoreboard by two. You shouldn't have to overpay just because you're a bigger, tall size. After all, life's unfair enough as it is. The Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. 
direct from the pages of the National Telltale. The Psychic Psychic Predict predict the the Future. Incredible. Aliens from the planet Xenon will land on the White House lawn later this year. And in a startling twist, three will be elected to Congress. Let's face it, if predicting the future were easy, you wouldn't need insurance. That's why the Buckman Mitchell team is there for all life's unexpected twists and turns. No one can predict the future, but you can make it more secure with Buckman Mitchell. Many of the designer labels in our suits are the same well-known labels you'll find in department stores. But then they should be. After all, they're made by the same manufacturers. The men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. It's time for this week at Bulldog Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. Next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, don't miss your chance to see the Fresno State baseball team in action against the nationally ranked Pepperdine Waves. First pitch on Friday night is 7 p.m. with 1 o'clock games Saturday and Sunday. On Thursday, the Fresno State women's basketball team returns home to take on the rival San Jose State Spartans. This one tips off at 7 p.m. in the North Gym. And keep up to date with your favorite Bulldog teams. Log on to the official Fresno State Athletic website at www. GoBulldogs.com. This week at Bulldog Sports has been brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. Tark taking a seat on the bench after the timeout with 9.39 remaining. Of course, the state trailing 18 to 16. The biggest lead for either team has been four points. Bulldogs been up by four and down by four. Now with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three-pointer. Haven't hit a three-pointer yet. They only tried that one by Roberson. And they tried posting up Terrence Roberson on that possession, which is another thing they put in for this game. Post up the wing man. You can see Harrington is smaller, but he's really working hard. Ten on the shot clock. Alexander inside to Abney. Lays it up and in. Great pass by Alexander. Six points up for Abney. Tied at 18. It's a pretty good job of seeing the floor by the guy who's a leading scorer in the country. Shelton drives and takes it straight to the hoop for the left-hander. The first team of the nation to get 20 wins is the first one to 20 points tonight. He moved by Mugamila with a left-handed hook. He got great position. Yeah, he had turned his other his, off the left shoulder the first two times. I think he wanted to show he had a few more things in his repertoire. Tied at 20. Harrington thanks. Inside the three-point line, rattles home the two-pointer. And again, Tulsa back in front by a deuce. And very heady player for a sophomore. I mean, he's a guy who's shooting 57% of his threes and yet had two, three opportunities and turned down two of them. Alexander will take it up. He's short. Rebound. And a foul on the rebound. Let's see if it's on Alexander. Yeah, I think he came in after the missed shot. Alexander does pick up the foul. That'll be his first. Brandon Kurtz checking back into the game for Tulsa. Here you can see a pretty good shot, and he just came in. And you can see that Tulsa right there had five guys rebounding the defensive boards. That's something that all great defensive teams do. Five team fouls on Fresno State. There's another one as Abney whistled for the reach around. On the freshman Kevin Johnson. And that's something that the Bulldogs really don't care if they get the ball in there. What they want is is if he gets it to pressure it, you really can't try to deny it because it's 1-4 across and there's no help behind you. But you want to pressure it because the guy on the wing on the ball side is going to go back door. Two personal fouls on Abney. Harrington off the inbound. A rainbow. Hurts with a rebound. Looks like he wants to put it back up. Right hand hook is in by Brandon Kurtz. Kurtz has five. And another two points off the offensive boards. Keep working, Tony. Keep working, Tony. Porter kicks it out to Roberson. Gets Harrington in the air and nails the jumper. Gave Harrington some of his own medicine. That's exactly the same move that Harrington used on the last possession. A whistle and a timeout that we called at the other end before Tulsa can get the ball inbound. Golden Hurricane wanted to talk about it with 731 ring. Well, what happened was they they, did, they had someone inbounding the ball, but they didn't have anybody to inbound it to. And rather than get the five point or the five second violation, they called time. Here's Roberson coming into the middle. You have to honor this head fake. 
See, Harrington goes up in the air. There's really no need for it because he's probably not going to block Roberson's shot anyway. He's a lot shorter than he is. Uh, maybe he should stay down on his feet, and then if Roberson goes up, try to go and, and contest it. But you're not going to block that shot. Roberson, nice job with the jump stop. Ball fake, let him go by, and then step through with an easy 12-footer. Throws the ball out of bounds with 7.31 remaining. Terrence Roberson coming back from that uh, little bout with the flu on Thursday. Yeah, and they're showing no signs of it right now. Both teams have uh, picked up their shooting. Each at 50% for the game. On the drive, count the basket by Tony Hurd, and he was fouled. Chance for a three-point play. And Courtney Alexander lost sight on that one. Demetrius Porter was beat to the outside, and as he turned the corner, um, he, I think he expected some help down low. And Courtney was chasing his man because uh, he's playing the shooter. Don't get it to go. Rebound Larry Abney. So the Bulldogs. Down again by Poole. And I think that's up to six rebound already. And foul outside, a holding foul on Tony Hurd. You know, we talked about that round of hand checking, but that wasn't even a hand check, that was just a forearm shiver. Uh, but it happens so often, I don't know if the referees can call everyone. First foul on Hurd, 18 fouls on Tulsa, so quarter to the line, shooting one and one. Ooh. Rebound out here on the long rebound. So Alexander will tell on three. That's the good Abney sky score. Keeps it alive for Roberson. Alexander misses the gun and goes down hard. And I think they called him for a charge. Now, Brown's going to be on Kurtz. That right there is that one. That one is Courtney Alexander on a free throw line, and Terrence Roberson would have had an assist should he put it in. But this is Larry Abney's. These are Larry Abney's points. The coming from the weak side, keeping the ball alive, and that's the only reason that the Bulldogs had an opportunity to get to the free throw line. Kurtz picks up his first foul. You saw the left arm. Still have to kind of push. Now Tulsa is going with their two best inside scorers. In Shelton and Kurtz as, as Larry Abney moved on that free throw and wiped the point away. See, that's not a real good uh, that's not a real good play right there, Ralph. Because Courtney Alexander is probably going to make that free throw. So it's a three-point game. Fresno State down here, 26-23 with 6:58 remaining in the half. Hey, hon, you coming? Just a minute. Okay, bud, okay. Digital camcorder. Okay, good play. Oh. 34-inch digital TV. Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm going to get it. Right in between guys. I've okay. got it. Go. Oh. And a refrigerator with ice dispenser to keep things a little cooler. <laughs> Best Buy. Turn on the fun. Mommy and Daddy keep talking about a dream come true. Daddy says we keep smiling because our new Brentwood home is so affordable. My brother and I go to school in the Clovis School District. That's really super. Mommy loves to cook, so she really likes the kitchen. And Daddy likes something he calls romance. I don't know what that is, but Mommy likes it too. Visit Greystone by Brentwood at Chestnut and Alluvial and Brentwood Fort Washington on Maple North of Shepherd. So what's your favorite at Bobby Salazar's? Give me some more! For the holidays, remember party trays, business and family get-togethers. Yo, Bobby! And our homemade tamales. Bobby Salazar's with locations in Fresno, Clovis, Kingsford, Porterville, and this month's Visalia. Ah! Sunday night at 9, Mulder and Scully embark on a mystery for the millennium and enlist the help of a long lost friend on the X Files following the new comedy Malcolm in the Middle, only on your station, KMPH, Fox 26. All right, some of the fans taking in the game here at uh, Selend Arena. Jack, a lot of that virus going around here, I guess. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Ralph, we just break out in 
in their red and white checks. Yeah, I, I don't know what would possess somebody to do that. He must have lost the fans. He must have lost the bat. <laughs> Three point lead. Tulsa with the basketball. Under seven minutes remaining here in the first half. Marcus Hill to the floor and he was fouled. The foul will be called on Courtney Alexander. Second foul on Alexander. Yeah, you can see here, Courtney it has to it saw it late, but he came off the uh, Shelton screen and trailed it, which is what you have to do because if you don't and, and you slide through on the ball side, the uh, cutter's going to fade to the corner and you're going to give up three. But as he did, he was beaten and just reached out and uh, out. Hill gets the bounce on the first one. Again, it's a four-point lead to Tulsa. Hill's not a particularly good free throw shooter. Only 50% of the conference. He's got 55 overall. If he makes this one, the Golden Hurricane will have his biggest lead. Five points. Hits them both. So it's a 28-23 Tulsa lead. Four points for Hill. Great pass from Porter. Nice reverse layup on Alexander. Yeah, we're pressuring out there. You saw Melvin Eli set a screen, and, and Porter will trap. Tulsa will trap any screen on the ball. Kurtz gets away from Eli inside and slams it. Yeah, Melvin got caught behind him and tried to come around, and, and uh, it was a good job of recognition by Tulsa. Five point Tulsa lead. Alexander. Kicks it out. He thought Roberson was going to break. And it's out of bounds. Turnover by Fresno State. 5.59 remaining here in the first half. Yeah, the Bulldogs, if they can cut down on those loose possessions, they're going to be right in this game because they're playing extremely well, except for the, the loose ones. Oh, Kurtz had totally breaking the basket. Elected not to get it to him. Well, Melvin Eli did a really good job. That's going to be three fouls on Kofi Alexander. Now you got a problem if you talk. Tells the coach uh, he, he's all right. He wants to stay in the game. Did you, you ever see a, Did you ever see a player say, "Now you better take me out"? I don't think I've ever seen that happen. I know that Jerry's the type of guy to leave him in because, and I've asked him this: Why do you leave guys in foul trouble? He said they're not doing much good on the bench, so he gambles on it, and uh, it doesn't look like this early in the game he's going to. I think Travis Manfield's checking in for him. Hill makes it uh, makes his third straight free throw, and Alexander does go to the bench. This is a, too big a gamble to take if you're taught. Travis Demandy in for Fresno State. But don't be surprised if, if Tulsa doesn't make a run. I mean, they're up six with a potential seven here. Don't be surprised to see Alexander go back in the game because he doesn't want to let this get out of hand. Hill makes them both. Now a seven-point lead for Tulsa. Abney from the baseline. Can't get it to go. Put back by Roberson, no good. Rebound Kurtz. I don't think that's the one the Bulldogs want. Not that he can't make it, but I just don't think that's the Kurtz for three. And it's a 10 point Tulsa lead. Kurtz in double figures with 10. That's two for two for Kurtz, and he's only made one on the season. Roberson for three. On the rim, and he gets the rebound. Oh boy, he really threw out the elbow. Oh, he can't get it to go. Shelton hit the deck, and Abney hit out the elbow. No call. He hit it over Shelton, and he runs down the floor and tries to score on him. He's trying for the rebound. Bang from behind by Shelton. So it'll be out of bounds. There's no stay. Well, I think they're calling they call foul, foul on Shelton. And we'll go on the other end to shoot free throws. Well, the Bulldogs got into the bonus early, Ralph, but haven't capitalized. Nick Irvin missed the front end of a one and one. Demetrius Porter missed the front end of a one and one. Now you have Larry Abney going to the line. It's good defense by Larry Abney right there. Goes up, and it's pretty easy call to make. Abney already with 10 rebounds tonight. 
But the one I had commented on where, where Larry took the shot on the baseline, it's not that he can't make it, it's just that he doesn't usually take it and it was very early in the possession. And the fact that you're down by 10, I don't think that's the one that they wanted at that time. Great temptation, though, when you're left all alone right there. There's a reason you're left all alone sometimes. <laughs> This is the second nine point Tulsa lead. Herrick is back in the Kurtz throws it away. He was looking for Charlie Davis inside. Yeah, there, and Bill Self is going deep into his bench. He normally does not go that deep into his bench. I mean, these guys are getting minutes on the air, but uh, mainly because they've had a lot of blowout games. He's already played nine guys. From Robertson, slammed on the floor. Abney comes up with it, and there's going to be a foul. And it's a good thing for uh, Fresno State because Tulsa was coming out of there with the basketball. Want to get after? Yeah, the, the Bulldogs have had too many. We call we call them loose possessions. There are too many possessions where you're not getting a good shot. Um, as you said, they're bailed out on that one. But they're just going to, when they get into their offense, they're doing a really nice job of breaking Tulsa down and getting some pretty good opportunities. But once again, they don't capitalize from the free throw line. Uh, Bulldogs are killing themselves from the line here. I think this is his second straight. That makes a little bit. Eight point Tulsa lead. Approaching four minutes here remaining in the half. Courtney Alexander on the Bulldog bench with three fouls. Bob inside. Perch again gets away. Lays it up and in. Yeah, see, that's tough. I mean, if you play behind him, he has a nice low post game. If you front him, they throw it over the top. You want pressure on the ball, and you want to try to take the, the pass away that way, but it's difficult. Bambi dribbles it off his foot. And it's over and back. Turnover for Fresno State. And with 3.47 remaining, it's a 10 point Tulsa lead. The Golden Hurricane will also have the basketball after a timeout. So the Bulldogs have some work to do as they talk it over on the bench. Travis and Bambi just trying to make the move. And and came right off of his foot. And there's another giveaway. That's another giveaway possession. You, you, you want to try to come down every possession and get a good shot. But even if you get a bad shot, it's better than a, just a turnover. Fans, stick with us for halftime. We'll have Bulldog Spotlight. We'll also get you up to date on what happened in the world. We came from the break. And the stats and highlights brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. All that from the halftime. Brandon Kurtz done this a couple of times tonight, Jack. Yeah, here Melvin Eli's trying to go over the top, but he's pretty far out. You see, Kurtz really pushes him up the lane. And right there, there's no help side because Terrence Roberson's man is coming to the top, so that takes away the help side. They just do a real nice job running their offense. Here's how they stack up right now. Fresno State scoring leader Alexander unofficially. Uh, Larry Abney leading in field goal percentage and in rebounds, I might add. Terrence Roberson, top free throw shooter by percentage. And when you saw the stats early in the broadcast, Demetrius Porter's leading the league in assists, and Melvin Eli is leading the league in block shots. Abney tonight has 10 rebounds already. Courtney Alexander with eight points, but he is on the bench with three fouls. And that's going to be difficult for the Bulldogs to overcome because not only is he your leading scorer, but he's your first option, and he's your option from the outside, which allows you to get the ball inside to Melvin Eli. So the Bulldogs are going to have to really tighten up over the last 347 and try to narrow this gap, or else you're looking at just another typical Tulsa game where they run out on people. The Bulldogs, I think, are playing them better than anyone else right now, except for the possessions where they come away empty uh, without even a shot, and also a couple times where they gave some second shot opportunities that translated into points for the Hurricane. Bulldog staying man to man. Knocked away by Eli, stolen by Eli. Pretty good idea. Take it all the way. Melvin Eli. 
And that's pretty good athleticism from your 6'9 guys. So you see Larry Abney and Melvin Eli with a couple real nice defensive plays and athletic moves. But the ball goes inside off the rim. Can't get it to go was Davis. But Fresno State now with a chance to get it in six. They're going to put a break on that. Could have been a weakness down there. Eli comes up with a loose ball. They need to regroup there. Back to Eli Roberson. That's not going to go, but Eli gets the rebound. Double team. Roberson. Nice dish to Abney. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. That one ball. Eli. And he was fouled trying to take it up. So the Bulldogs very active on the offensive glass. Keeping it alive and getting a chance to score the line. You know, we talked about uh, each possession is, is precious, and the Bulldogs played about as hard as they could play. But you do need to, to knock that thing down if you're Larry Abney on both of those point blank shots. You just need to come away with points. Now, if Melvin Eli can, can knock the two free throws down, you, you come out even better because you get another personal and, and team foul on him. Uh, and as we noted, you're going to see Courtney Alexander re enter the game. Because Jerry uh, Tarkanian just doesn't like what he has on the floor as an offensive team. And he's taken out his top rebounder as Larry Abney heads to the bench. If there is a weakness in Abney's game, it's, it's finishing right around the basket. But, boy, he sure does go after rebounds. Oh, he attacks the glass as well as anybody, I mean, which is why you lead the league. And I believe he's around sixth in the nation in rebounds. the net on both of them, and it is a six-point game. This is a big possession for Fresno State right here. They need to stop that. Third. Rebound goes to Alexander. He's hit by Kurtz, but Alexander was right there as he approached the two-and-a-half minute mark. Courtney going right to work on offense. Throws it up and in with a reverse. And that's why he's back in the game, Ralph. There, there aren't too many guys on Fresno State's team who can make that move. That's pretty much a coast-to-coast -coast move and a finish at the other end, forcing Tulsa to call time because now the Bulldogs have cut the lead to four. Six unanswered points for the Bulldogs, and with 2.24 remaining, it's a four-point Fresno State game. Fresno State trailing by four. And Alexander with 13. And here's what we're talking about. This is a one-on-three right there. They had three guys converging on him, and he went around each one and still finished. Now, at the other end, the Bulldogs, I don't know if it was because of the one possession and they happened to get that way in transition, but the Bulldogs had switched and put Terrence Roberson on Kurtz and had Melvin Eli uh, playing uh, uh, Davis, which is, a, which is a difference. Bulldogs are going with Alexander, Porter, Demandy, Roberson, and Eli. And they are. They're putting, they're putting Eli on Shelton and Roberson on Kurtz. This is a tough matchup for Terrence Roberson. Bulldogs still have not hit a three-point shot in this game. Boy, they go into it right away. Roberson. Shelton is inside. Count the basket, and he was fouled from behind. Boy, just get it to your big bruiser. The foul will be on Demandy. Yeah, you, know, you don't know if uh, if Tulsa did this because they just wanted to go into Kurtz or if they um, if they wanted to try to exploit Roberson on Kurtz and the size advantage. But Terrence did a really nice job, caused him to fumble it, but then he just came up with, uh, as a 20 and one team does, they have, the, they have the, the poise to cut to the basket, find the open man, and look to try to get a three-point play. Here's a reach-in foul by the Bambi. Eli's not used to Eli's not used to making the pass from the perimeter and really that wasn't a, it wasn't all that bad a look by Terrence Roberson, but to throw the ball to your five eleven point guard, there's not that much he's gonna do on a backdoor move. Hold on turnover, one forty five remaining here in the first half. Well Felix getting ready to check in. Six more Tulsa lead. Knocked away by Porter. 
out of bounds. It'll be Tulsa Ball with 17 on the shot clock. Felix checks into the game for the Bulldogs. Going to the bench, she'll be Melvin Eli. And there you thought, Ralph, maybe that uh, Tulsa would try to run something to get Courtney Alexander's fourth foul, but they just run their offense because they run it so well and they have such great balance. And the ball thrown away by Hill. He's got a little bounce pass inside. He wasn't there for Shelton. Yeah, Roberson did a nice job on Shelton that time, and uh, it was a bad angle, and that's what caused the turnover. Tenth turnover for Tulsa. The Bulldogs have turned it over 11 times. 1-10 remaining in the half. Quarter. Off the hands of Felix. It was a great pass. Felix wasn't expecting it. Yeah, and that's when you have to be expecting. I mean, when your point guard penetrates down the middle and he beats his man, the only way they can help is with the post defenders. So as your post man leaves, you have to be ready for that pass. It was, that's something I think Noel Phillips will be catching the year from now. And the freshman has to compose and don't play defense at the other end. Inside, great play by Roberson, anticipating the pass. Roberson's an excellent post defender. He's actually an excellent post offensive player as well. He tries to get it in, but Alexander turns it over. He goes the other way. Reported by Hurd. Oh, and that hurts. Yeah, that's a five-point swing right there. That's, that's the easy three in transition, and it's because of the turnover. The Tulsa Hurricane are, are capitalizing more on their turnovers than the Bulldogs are. Here they'll just go into a one-four set and see if Courtney Alexander can beat his man. Look for Tulsa to take a charge with somebody. Bulldogs looking for that first three-pointer. This is the guy you like. Well, he spots Roberson, and then Roberson is defended by Shelton. He has to fire it up. Well short. Rebound by McDaniel into the game, and there's the buzzer. So the Bulldogs, I would say, Jack, maybe with another of those loose possessions that you were talking about. Too many of those in this first half. Well, that one, what they wanted to do was try to get a one-on-one -on -one, a situation for Courtney Alexander, and, and he saw Terrence Roberson open in the corner. Terrence didn't want to take it too soon, and then when he saw how, how, how few seconds there were, he just threw up a shot that didn't come close. Bulldogs are one and four this season when they have trailed at halftime, and they're down by nine in this one as Tulsa leads it 42-33. If you need corporate transportation, think Touch of Class Limousine Service. Whether you need to travel within the Valley or to San Francisco International Airport, Touch of Class will get you there conveniently and in style. Just think about it. No more commuter airplanes. No more long-term parking. No more hassles. Touch of Class Limousine Service. Always the newest limousines. Always the newest black sedan. Touch of Class Limousine. Your Valley Corporate Transportation Specialist. For those of you married to your job, every once in a while, have a fling with your wife. Royal Caribbean, like no vacation on earth. Hope you're enjoying the game here on Fox 26. I'm Kristen Hoke with your halftime report. Fresno police need your help in locating a missing man. The 25-year-old was last seen at Tulare and Maple in Fresno at 4 Friday afternoon. However, Fresno police say the relatives of Van Yafbone to Nacom says he called them last night saying he was at a Madera truck stop. By the time Madera Sheriff's Department got there, he was gone. The missing man has a mental capacity of a 12-year-old. He is Asian with a medium build, brown eyes, and black hair. He's 5'4", 130 pounds, and was last seen wearing a brown jacket, blue jeans, and white Reeboks. If you've seen him, please contact the police at 498-1414. The state health director has reiterated her warning against three varieties of bean dip that have been linked to a bacterial disease. The number of confirmed cases of shigellosis in California is now up to 30. At least 32 other cases have been reported in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The dips which can be contaminated are as follows. Senior Felix's five-layered party dip, Delicioso five-layer dip, and Trader Joe's five-layered fiesta dip. 
Consumers may call the dip manufacturer at 1-800-807-7335. A group by a women's rights group says California's welfare recipients are being forced into low-paying jobs and they become worse off than when they were unemployed. A staff attorney for the group says that in Los Angeles County, 85% of people moving from welfare to low-paying jobs were there are still eligible for welfare. Their average wage was $6.81 an hour. We'll be right more back with more of your halftime reports right after this. Mom, did you get a promotion? Not recently. Are we rich? Not since I last checked the bank balance. Are we kind of special? Yes. Now the maker of America's most luxurious minivan, Town & Country Limited, also brings you America's most affordable Chrysler Voyager. I figured it out. Your dad told your baseball car collection. See your Northern California Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. The new place to be, the only place to buy. Welcome back. NASA says it may have to delay Monday's planned launch of the space shuttle Endeavour. They say they need to check its engines after finding a damaged seal in one of the main engines used to send the shuttle Discovery into orbit in December. Endeavour is slated to fly a 10-day radar mapping mission of the Earth. Much of the southeast is ankle deep in either snow or freezing rain this weekend. And it's not what Super Bowl fans expected on the eve of the big game. Brian Cabell has a story from Atlanta. The rules on Atlanta's roads have changed, much to the chagrin of many motorists, especially on the overpasses and bridges which freeze more quickly than surface roads. Law enforcement agencies report literally hundreds of collisions on the roads in the last day because of ice which continues to build. Still, with the latest blast of frigid weather here in this Super Bowl city, officials remain hopeful. There are no reports of widespread power outages, no problem with heating and that sort of thing. So just stay off the roads and uh, everything should be fine. Hartsfield International Airport remains open. But for the second day in a row, Delta, the primary carrier here, announced widespread cancellations of flights into and out of Atlanta. Some Super Bowl events were canceled as well. One of them, a party at which current and former NFL players were to entertain and dine with 900 school children. The school buses couldn't make it, so the lunches, boxes of them, were donated to a food bank. Other luckier children who didn't come by bus enjoyed the NFL experience, an interactive football program that challenged them to show off their skills. I love football. I love to play football, so it's just heaven. Heaven for celebrity seekers was a party thrown by sports agent Lee Steinberg. Both political and sports figures showed up, many by limousine, to enjoy the food and drink and talk about what else? The weather. It's too bad for the, that the week in the Super Bowl that it's, that it's kind of nasty, but, uh, you know, the, as long as you stay on the road, it's all right. Meanwhile, back at the Georgia Dome, final preparations are underway for the big event. No weather problems here. The temperature inside, a constant 72 degrees, which will please players and fans alike. Ryan Cabell, CNN, Atlanta. Hey, college basketball fans, this year, March Madness begins right here in Fresno. Stellan Arena will be the site of some of the most exciting hoop action in the country as Fresno State hosts the 2000 Western Athletic Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament, March 8th through the 11th. Be sure to reserve your seat for witness 16 hopeful teams grind it out over four action-packed days to crown two champions. Call today and secure your seat for this 14-game hoop extravaganza. For tournament passes and information, call 278-DOGS. Don't miss out on the biggest sporting event to ever come to Fresno. Here's my top ten at Fresno Bulldog Brewing Company. Bulldogs 25 Boots. Bulldogs All-Weather Patio. Bulldog welcomes large parties. Bulldogs Homemade Ice Cream. Bulldogs Handcrafted Root Beer. Fresno's Best Fish and Chips. Bulldogs Angus Steaks. Bulldogs Great Atmosphere. Bulldogs Great Service. And number one, Bulldogs Great Food. Prepared fresh, no microwaves. Bulldog Brewing Company at the Fig Garden. Unleash the taste. Frazier has lost his job. But he's having a swinging time. He's even invited over his fan club. We know you from the magazine. You an orange flower dress. Oh, how pretty. Do come in. It's a big party. We'll wait for everyone else to come. This is the fan club, the three of us. Join the fun. Seeing all of you, I sort of wish I had a club myself. I'm Frazier. Monday night at 7.30 on Fox 26. Time now for Bulldog Spotlight.
You can never accuse Nick Irvin of being conservative with the basketball. I think if you know basketball well and you watch the game, you can see him make some plays that nobody in our ball club can make. Flashy, was that it? Was, would that be how you would describe yourself? Yeah, I'm a little flashy. I like to, you know, growing up, they told me uh, never cheat the people. <laughs> Get the people what they came to see. The only problem was the people didn't come to see this, which is what Irvin did too many times early this season. But since then, Nick the Quick has played much more under control. Nick's got great court vision, and uh, he has a great feel for the game. He, he's a pure, pure point guard. Coach always <laughs> get on me when I make a uh, bad play. You know, he just wants me to make the right play out there. So when I do make a uh, mistake, I just try to fight through it, and hopefully I make the, uh, the next play better. When you first look at Nick Irvin, you think fullback, not point guard. And at 5'11", 215 pounds, Irvin's been criticized for not being in shape. I ain't never really, you know, did no conditioning. I always, always played pickup in Chicago, you know. And when I got here, I should have been in better shape, but I wasn't. You know, it took me a long time to get in shape. Now I'm getting, now I'm coming on getting in shape. We'll visit more with Nick Irvin right after this. The Red Wave rules at Bulldog Basketball, so hit the court hard in authentic game wear. Keep out the cold in warm Fresno State sweatshirts in all styles. Bulldog jackets and windbreakers for men and women. Polos, t-shirts, and Fresno's largest selection of caps and hats. For gift giving, the Bulldog Shop has it. From pins to puppies. And hoop it up with the kids in Bulldog clothing. If you're looking for the real gear, look to the Bulldog Shop. Cedar and Barstow. Basketball is in Nick Irvin's blood. All five of his brothers and sisters played ball. One of them, Byron, actually played in the NBA with the Portland Trailblazers. And he used to go out there and do all the fa fancy passes. And, you know, that's why I try to be like when I go out there. Like when things going bad, I can always call them and talk to them. And, you know, I, I call them for advice, and it's good to have a family background. His teammates and coaches have been Nick's family since he came to Fresno from Chicago. And Nick loves his relationship with Tark, even though he sometimes gets in his face. Coach Play, you know, I, I take it serious, but when, when you tell you, you look at him like, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's funny, you know. I love Coach to death, and when you talk to me, I, I got to take it serious. I love Coach. I just love him. <laughs> you can tell Nick likes to have fun, and that approach in life helps him on the court. When you're out there, you got to have fun. You know, you got to be relaxed. You can't you can't be tense out there when you're playing. So I just try to smile and, you know, get everybody else uh, uh, <laughs> smiling too. And usually they are. I'm Dana Green with the Bulldog Spotlight. Gotchocks opens their doors for Furniture Sale 2000. From Elite, the all-leather sofa chair and love seat, only $19.99. From Bassett's bedroom collection, this beautiful queen sleigh bed is just $10.99. Our exclusive three-piece living room set with choice of chair is just $10.99. Oh, and use your Gotchocks charge card and make no payments until July 2000. The Furniture Sale 2000, now at Gotchocks. Gotchocks in Manchester, Fashion Fair, and Visalia. This isn't just another dairy farm. It's years of hard work and learning. This isn't just another orchard. It's someone's backyard filled with dreams and childhood memories. This is the San Joaquin Valley, the nation's number one agricultural center. And for over 80 years, Fresno Madera and Valley Farm Credit have helped make dreams come to life from one generation to the next. Fresno Madera and Valley Farm Credit, our roots are in agriculture. Welcome back to Selling Arena, winding down our halftime, 42-33. Tulsa leading Fresno State in this big, big showdown for the Bulldogs in a game that Fresno State to, uh, really needs to come back in the second half, Jack, and get something done. They had some uh, some four possessions in the first half. Right, and I think that was one of the, the major factors in the half. The difference is that Tulsa comes down and pretty much gets a shot on every possession. The Bulldogs, when they run their offense, are doing a pretty nice job at getting some good looks 
but there are too many times they come down and, and play it too loosely. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. It begins with the, the young man out of Bakersfield, Centennial High School, and Bakersfield College. Brandon Kurtz, the big man in the middle for Tulsa. He was their leading scorer in the first half. A little right-hand push off to create some space between Melvin Eli and himself. He takes to the basket two of his 12 points in the first half, leading Tulsa. Now, Fresno State turned the ball over 13 times in the first half. There's one of Tulsa's steals by Dante Swanson. He takes it up to court, and the three-pointer put up by Tony Hurd. Nothing but net. Now, Fresno State fell behind by 10 in this game on a couple of occasions. The Bulldogs, though, would rally late in the first half to get within six. Courtney Alexander played a big part of that, even though he spent much of the first half on the bench with some foul trouble. Three fouls. Alexander with the layup. And Fresno State was within four points. But again, Tulsa came back to open up a nine-point spread at halftime as we take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And Jack, I guess if you look for a difference right there, it's highlighted the three-point shots, three-point baskets. They've made 12 points on three-pointers, none for the Bulldogs. And that's pretty much the difference of the game. Right, it's the difference in the game, and it's also they're getting better looks from the three-point line. It's not so much that they're better three-point shooters. Courtney Alexander leading all scores with 13 points. Larry Abney already in double figures with rebounds. Brandon Kurtz leading Tulsa with 12. And again, unfortunately for Fresno State, the history has been 1-4 and four this season when trailing in the second half. But they can come back. They showed they can do it at least one time. We'll be back with more from Stella Arena right after this. of you married to your job. Every once in a while, have a fling with your wife. Royal Caribbean, like no vacation on Earth. In the next 30 years, the population of the Earth will double to nearly 12 billion people. It will take 450 trillion pounds of food to meet the demand. This is agriculture's challenge in the 21st century, a challenge to be met by e-commerce. The AgZone.com, the critical key to a worldwide solution designed by agriculture for agriculture. The AgZone.com, providing e-commerce services, exposure worldwide while cutting your costs. The AgZone.com, everything under one roof. Ralph, what they had in, at halftime, Jerry Tarkanian was absolutely livid uh, that the Bulldogs did not run their offense every time down. Not so much because they weren't doing it, but because that's all they had preached and talked about prior to the game. And when they did it, they had a lot of success. He said, you're not going to have to be that patient. You can get good shots off a few passes, maybe three or four, because Tulsa really likes to gamble. So look for the Bulldogs to really come down and value every offensive possession. Defensively, they have to keep the pressure on. they got to pressure the passer more so they can't get the ball into the post. And remember, Courtney Alexander playing with three fouls will start the second half with those three fouls, Jack. And that's going to be something to keep an eye on for the second half. Bulldogs trailing by nine. 42 to 33. Brandon Kurtz really did some good things for Tulsa. Can you imagine there's a guy with something you talked about, the guy from here going out of town to go to school? And imagine he felt he had something to prove. He's going to have a lot of fans watching. Some well, probably here in the arena, and uh, many watching down at Baker Bill. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people came up to watch him. And, you know, he's five for six. He's two for two from three. And like we said, coming into the game, he's one for nine on the year from three. So he really was juiced for the game. Missed it both his free throws, but has six rebounds, a, a couple assists, and only one turnover, and only one foul, which might be more important. Yeah, Kurtz just 11% from the three-point line this season prior to this game. The Bulldogs will have the basketball to start the second half. Roberson inbound, gets it to the meeting's quarter and we're underway. Eli 
Look at Entrez, the right hand hook. In and out. Boy, that one went way down. And came out. The yeah, Bulldogs can live with that one. Yeah, they'll, they'll do real well if they just get shot like that. Steal by Abney. He's got to hold it up. Smart move. Alexander for three. Abney tips it, nearly tipped it in. Can't control it, though. It goes to Coley. And that's as good a look as they've had at a three-pointer all game. As to Kurtz, lays it up and in. He has 14. And that was just bad defensive transition by the Bulldogs. They, they, they had plenty of time to get back because they had a couple taps at the basket. Uh, they're in danger of a five-second count here. Biggest lead of the game, 11-point spread for Tulsa. Eli, again, 0 for 2 in the second half. Rebound, Abney, count of the goal as he was fouled. I believe it's going to be on Coley. And the Dogs want to go into Melvin Eli because Kurtz is playing behind him. As you can see here, you caught the tail end of it. Kurtz is playing behind him, and they're really not doubling. They're, they'll send maybe half a man. They'll have a guy just get off his defender, but not really go and double hard. So the Bulldogs are going to try to establish Melvin Eli again. Well, those were two pretty good looks. First one was better, and then Larry Abney realizes when the ball goes to Melvin, if he is going to be played one-on-one, -on -one, he's probably going to shoot it, so Larry gets position, gets his 12th rebound. Now he has to convert free throws. Career high. He gets the second 10 point. It's also lead. Also comes down quick in transition. want to pressure more on the perimeter. Tulsa does a nice job running their offense. Ball was knocked away, but it went to Coley, who followed up his own shot. And yeah, that's bouncing the ball right there, because that's pretty good defense by the Bulldogs. 12 points. Tulsa lead. Alexander forces one up and in. That's some shot right there. That's a difficult shot to make. I think he was trying to draw a foul. I think he might have, but just, just wasn't called. Alexander has 15, leads all scores. Hill, high arcing three pointer. Kurtz with the rebound. Bounce pass inside the hill, lays it off the glass and in. And that's, that's a nice job of recognizing when you have the rebound, Hill cutting to the basket. That's a nice job of recognizing an overplay on the wing and Courtney Alexander back door. Demetrius Porter saw it with a nice lob pass. But the Bulldogs can't afford to trade baskets. Steal by Abney, he's second to the half. He gets it back. Oh, it. That was an excellent play by Larry Abney on, two, on three counts. One was the steal, giving it to Demetrius Porter, and then getting it back and finishing. 11 points and 14 rebounds for Abney. Bulldogs are really extending their defense now. Hill, three-quarter. Tulsa is a patient team. There, there's a reason you're 20 and one. Again, an 11-point lead now for Tulsa. Ball knocked away by Hill at the defensive end. Out of bounds. Fresno State ball with 26 on the shot clock. Substitutions now for Tulsa. Dante Swanson comes in along with David Shelton as Tony Hurd and Greg Harrington will get a rest. Just under 17 minutes remaining. 11-point Tulsa lead. Eli looking for his first basket of the second half. Can't get it to go. Now that's a shot I think Tulsa will give Melvin Eli. That fadeaway. Brandon Kurtz is really bodying Melvin and not letting him go inside, not going for that up fake that Melvin gives. And the referee is watching him bang bodies at the other end. Another rainbow three attempt put up by Hill. That one's no good. And we're going to get a, what do they call it, a tied up ball? Yeah, they call a jump ball on that one. Larry went up and got it and was tied up on the way down. Possession arrow to Tulsa. Taking a look at it, you'll see whether uh, he gets fouled on this or not. He goes up nicely for the rebound. And now it looks like he did have all ball. He went inside him. Shelton's a pretty strong guy, and Abney's a pretty strong guy. Harrington back in the game as Coley goes out. And uh, Hill again is firing on the three. He has one here in second half. And that one just got away from Porter. 
Harrington comes up with it. Well, Harrington's a really heady player. He, he had he had no numbers there. He had three on three, and he sees that they're doing a pretty good job in their half court uh, offense, so he just held the ball up. Porter ran into a big screen set by Kurtz on high. Shelton for three, and that's good. Their big guys can step out and shoot. They're, they're not particularly great three-point shooters. You know, Shelton, he's actually five for nine now in the conference from three. He was only shooting 37 before that, which is actually pretty good for a guy his size. Biggest lead of the game, 14. Alexander sets an eight for the work to be short. Abney can't control the rebound, but Eli can. Melvin Eli, now over four from the field in the second half. And each shot that he's taken has been more and more difficult. It could be a little frustration. Yeah, he had a real good look on the first one, but then he pushed the ball and further away from the basket right. since. Alexander comes out with the rebound. He stutter step, loses the ball, gets a pack, and he was fouled. You know, there's, a, there's a situation now where the Bulldogs came down three on three, as Tulsa did come down three on three. You can see it here. The dogs are coming down three on three. Tulsa pulled up. The Bulldogs go after this because they have a better chance of scoring three on three. Tulsa feels they have a better chance of scoring five on five. That was a pretty smart move. Alexander to the free throw line, shooting two as Eric Curry checks back in for Tulsa. He replaces Marcus Hill. Alexander with 18 points in the game. The crowd has gotten very quiet, as you might expect, with a 13 point Tulsa lead and 15 11 remaining in the game. Alexander makes it both. With 15 11 remaining, we have a timeout on the floor. 12 point. Tulsa lead. The Bulldogs down 54 42. If you're going to eat a spicy chicken sandwich from Carl's Jr., make sure you have something to drink. The new Carl's Jr. Spicy Chicken Sandwich, only 99 cents. Mommy and Daddy keep talking about a dream come true. Daddy says we keep smiling because our new Brentwood home is so affordable. My brother and I go to school in the Clovis School District. That's really super. Mommy loves to cook, so she really likes the kitchen. And Daddy likes something he calls romance. I don't know what that is, but Mommy likes it, too. Visit Greystone by Brentwood at Chestnut and Alluvial and Brentwood, Fort Washington on Maple North of Shepherd. Hey, hon. You have everything you need for the taxes? Oh, yeah. Got my 1040, my 1099. My number two. You don't know if I should list it on Schedule C. Okay. Yeah, here she is. Some boy from school. <gasps> Honey, um, where's my pencil? No. Who's out there? I'm worried about Bill. The taxes. You have to do taxes, but do you have to do them yourself? Fans, on Wednesday, February 9th, the Bulldogs will be celebrating 14th Annual National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Everyone's invited to take part in three mini clinics and meet our teams and coaching staffs. Registration for the event begins at 5.30 p.m. in the North Chin for National Girls and Women in Sports Day. A couple of interesting scores from around the land Air Force, which surprised BYU in the last game, is actually leading 19th rank Utah in the final minute of play by three points, 61-58. TCU is a winner over SMU tonight in the WAC. We'll have an interesting story for you about uh, former Fresno State star Rod Higgins at our next opportunity. He has a new job. Shelton. 
sure. Adley comes up with it. Boy, that was Larry Adley's well. possession right there. Did a real nice job. They ran a, a lob play out of the timeout. Larry uh, recognized it, went back and helped, then came out, got off his feet, but recovered. They came up with the rebound. So he Times getting into the basket. The follow up though is good. He has his first two points in the second half. It's a 10 point. Like I said, Ralph, I think that they'll live with that. And at the other end, it's Swanson finding an opening, putting it up and in, and drawing the foul. And chance to get three for two at the other end. What happens is every time the Bulldogs make any kind of run or, or make a real nice offensive play, Tulsa comes right back and answers. Free throw is no good by Dante Swanson. Five second count is on here. And it's over. Well, that's, that's difficult. If you, if you back up, and it's supposed to be six feet. Some referees give it a little more latitude than others, but that was pretty close, and, and they're doing a real good. E each point guard is pressuring the other. Tulsa with the ball on a 12 1 lead. Approaching 14 minutes remaining in this one. Nick Urban will check in for Fresno State. And the ball is dead. Harrington took an extra step on his way. So the Golden Hurricane turned it right back over. Well, that wasn't run as well. They've run that play about four times where they come off the high screen, they roll the post player, bring the other one from low post to high post. That one wasn't run nearly as well as the others. Urban's back in for quarter. Stumbles because he was tripped up, pushed down by Dante Swanson. First foul on Swanson. Three team fouls on Tulsa. It is a similar play to the other end when uh, Demetrius was, was picked off. And again, Abney can't finish around the basket as we turn to live action. Nice pass. Swanson. And there's that, tra and there's that transition again. That, that's a, a missed layup by the Bulldog. And then they come right down to the transition score. And how's that for an answer by Fresno State? And that's transition by Fresno State in the other direction. The Fresno State does not run as much as Tulsa does, but, but that was an answer. You can see the ball went in. This is coming out of the basket, which is difficult to run. It's a pretty athletic move by Terrence Roberson. Avoided the charge, finished, and got the foul. Roberson with a chance for a three-point play. And the best free throw shooter in the whack gets it. Nine, 11 point. Hurricane lead. The Bulldogs are going to have to string some defensive possessions together. Nearly a start there as Irvin knocked it away, knocked it away again. Fifteen on the shot clock. Inside to Shelton, and it was he was fouled by Nick Irvin with 13.09 remaining. The Bulldogs had some tough luck on that one. They had a couple deflections, and they just didn't come up with a loose ball. Uh, not because of lack of hustle. The Bulldogs didn't bounce their way on that one. That was a pretty good effort uh, by the Bulldogs on that possession until they got beaten off the dribble uh, into the paint. And when you get into the team gets into the paint, only bad things can happen. Roberson comes out as quarter, and Irvin are now at the same time. Heard. Long on the threes. Porter will screen out Kurtz out of bounds. It'll go to Fresno State. 13 02 remaining, an 11 point Tulsa lead. Bulldogs have trailed throughout the second half. Irvin gets it inside. Nearly loses it, gets it back. Yeah. Tulsa really overplays the passing lanes, and, and that's what they cause you to do. Because they're playing on a top, that's not a bad idea. It was just a little too high on the pass. Strong on the lob was Alexander. 
Shelton goes around Eli. Contact. Blocking foul will be called on Fresno State. Is it going to be Abney or Irvin? I think it was Irvin. It'll be Nick Irvin picking up the foul. Yeah, he came over and tried to help. I think he was just a little late. We can see it here. Shelton likes that drive right real strong. And once he goes, he's going to the basket. Nick was just a, a hair late on that one, but he had the right idea. Shelton shooting free throws. We can tell you about the story involving Rod Higgins. You know, his good friendship with Michael Jordan. They go back to their Chicago Bulls days together. Well, Jordan has recently taken over running the Washington Wizards, and tonight he made Rod Higgins his new head coach. Rod Higgins becomes a head coach for the first time in his career after serving as a longtime assistant for the Golden State Warriors. I thought you said he was his friend. <laughs> Well, a lot of people have thought that uh, Rod Higgins deserved a shot to uh, to become a head coach, and there was even some talk about him uh, coming to work at Fresno State as a head coach. But he's uh, stuck it out in the NBA and gets rewarded tonight as Rod Higgins is the new head coach of the Washington Wizards of the NBA, thanks to his friendship with Michael Jordan and his ability certainly to do the job. This ball is kicked out of bounds by Swanson. The Wizards pay a little more than Fresno State does. But he doesn't have the uh, the pleasure and opportunity of working with you and I on an everyday basis back in uh, Washington, D.C. I'm sure he took that into account. <laughs> so congratulations to uh, to Rod Higgins. One of his all-time favorites yeah. here at Fresno State. Yeah, great guy. Fresno State down by 13. Fresno State needs to get some going, but the ball is tied up. This time, Fresno State gets the possession arrow 12 minutes exactly. Right, but because they went back to the rule of two years ago, they get the ball back, but only 13 on the shot clock. If the offense gets it back, they don't get rewarded with a new clock. So it remains if the defense got it, obviously, to get a new clock. Alexander. And he hasn't had too many good looks this half. Is that the first three-pointer of the game for Fresno State? That is the very first three-pointer for Fresno State comes with 12 minutes left in the game. Also down to try to turn on the defense. As Curtis uses that right arm to get around and have uh, Eli, and a foul will be on Fresno State. It should be on Melvin Eli, and it is. Kurtz is a nice low post player. You watch here. Well, actually, he creates some space first for him. Then as he wheels, just comes in and shows him the ball. And he knows Melvin's a shot blocker. You want to show a shot blocker the ball. Takes it up to him. Takes it up. Go by one of seven on three-pointers after missing the first seven. And no attempts by Demetrius Porter. And not because he's passing them up. He's getting no open threes. I'm sure that Bill Self and his staff mentioned to his guys that Demetrius was 8 out of 9 on Thursday night. He hasn't even come close to seeing the open three points. Foley really firing from point blank. Didn't get it after the rebound. Melvin Eli gets the board and has to put his headband back on. Again, it was held on the way up by Hill. And, and you know, this is an interesting call here, Ralph, because the call was made early. He knew that he was beaten on it and held him. Hill held him. That should be an intentional foul. Well, the foul is on Hill, his third, five team fouls, 11.23 remaining. The Bulldogs are within 11. Still some work to do. We'll be right back. If you need corporate transportation, think Touch of Class Limousine Service. Whether you need to travel within the Valley or to San Francisco International Airport, Touch of Class will get you there conveniently and in style. Just think about it. No more commuter airplanes. No more long-term parking. No more hassles. Touch of Class Limousine Service. Always the newest limousines. Always the newest black sedans. Touch of Class Limousine. Your Valley Corporate Transportation Specialist. Driving a new Corolla is just a right turn away at your Toyota dealer. Corolla has people talking about how it's one of the most quiet and comfortable cars. Right now, lease a Corolla VE for $189 a month for 36 months with $1644 due at signing. 
People call Corolla smart. We say you'll call it one solid sedan that does nearly everything well. These Central Valley Team Toyota dealers have all the value of Corolla waiting for you. Time again for this week at Bulldog Sports, brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. Next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, don't miss your chance to see the Fresno State baseball team in action against the National Air Rank Pepperdine Waves. First pitch Friday night is at 7 p.m., followed by 1 o'clock game Saturday and Sunday afternoons. On Thursday, your women's basketball team from Fresno State returns home to take on the San Jose State Spartans. The WAC rivalry tips off at 7 p.m. in the North Gym. And keep up to date with your favorite Bulldog teams. Log on to the official Fresno State website at www www.gobulldogs.com This Week in Bulldog Sports has been brought to you by AT&T Wireless Services. There's a guy who's looking for some things to happen. He wants he wants the Bulldogs to shake it up so he can get up and cheer. Bulldogs down by 11. Terrence Roberson back in the game for Fresno State hoping he can spark something. He is 0 for 4 from 3 point range. Bulldogs well, is team 1 for 7. Yeah. Bulldogs were going. I knew they were, were going to come out of that timeout with a, with a play, and you thought that you were going to get that line. Uh, Alexander now with 24 points. He got that deficit to single digits down by nine. The curse breaks over this. The dunk. And that's the play they ran so effectively. Terrence Roberson tried. Wow, Nick Irvin saw an opening, took it, couldn't get the basket, but did draw the foul, so he will shoot free throws. And you know the Bulldogs needed to capitalize on this trip down after Kurtz blows the dunk. Right, what they do here, they've run this play several times. Terrence Roberson tries to deny Kurtz. He backdoors nicely, he just doesn't get up high enough. Then Nick Irvin will take it. Nick Irvin, if you don't stop him, he will take the ball to the basket. And Brandon Kurtz has picked up his fourth foul. Check that. It's not Kurtz. They give it to Coley. Coley's fourth foul. He has to come out of the game. Originally, they put 13 up on the board. But Jared Coley picks up his fourth. I don't think Kurtz got Kurtz down the even fourth. Close. He didn't get down the fourth fast enough. He had missed a shot at one end. But he couldn't have gotten down the fourth fast enough to foul. Urban makes some pain at the other end. With the free throw, it's an eight-point game. Yeah, a stop and a score. There's the stop. And a turnover here comes the Bulldogs. Fans are coming back, and so is Fresno State. The fans have been longing to see a ranked team in here, and this is the only chance they're going to get. Roberson left open for the three. Can't get it. It's short. It's going to be a battle for the ball. Courtney Alexander comes right over the press table. And timeout called by Fresno State. Alexander going to be untangled here from the radio crew. There's a heavy move. A heavy move by Nick Durkin. Great hustle. You're going to see Larry Adney and Courtney Alexander both. This is what the game means to these guys. They both go after it. Nick Irvin gets down on the floor and calls timeout. Wow, what a terrific play. And watch Alexander. You're going to get to see the guys you don't see very often. The radio crew, there's Bill Woodward. And he's getting out of the way. And Nick was calling timeout from the time he dove on the floor. He just rolled over until he saw a referee. Fresno State within a 10-34 remaining. An eternity left in this game. And that was vital because they really need a score on this possession. They, they cut it under 10, which you wanted, and then got a stop. Now they need a score. Bulldogs trip by as many as 14. Urban making the tackle with his penetration throws that one up and in off the glass. And he made him pay. They went out and denied Terrence Roberson, and because he saw the opening, he just took it to the basket. Nobody came to help. He threw it up on nicely off the glass. Fans are getting to his feet now with a six-point sweat. Knocked away. And a foul called on Irvin. Irvin and Abney were working over Shelton. The ball came free, but the foul is going to be called on Irvin. His third. So one thing, Ralph, that the Bulldogs really want to do is get this game close because Tulsa has not played in close games. They have only had three of their 21 games decided by less than fewer than 10 points. 
Harrington. Too strong on the three. Abney with his 17th rebound. There wasn't too much doubt he was getting that one. Make it 14 to 3 as Porter hits the three. I think they want to run. They want to run a set play right now. That's the best look to meet this Porter has. And he's been waiting a long time for it. And another turnover. Kurt says it was deflected by the Bulldogs. The officials say out of bounds. Fresno State. I think they might have missed that one. Terrence Robertson did a real nice job of getting the passing lane. Here's the last look by Porter. He's been waiting for a look like this. And as we said, he has a quick release. He's a little guy, but he has a quick release. On that last one, Roberson did a great job not only getting in a passing lane, but then selling the call to the official, because I think he might have nicked it. Bulldogs have scored eight unanswered points here to draw within three. Still nine and a half minutes left. Alexander for two. Uh, Porter battling for it, but Swanson comes up with it, gets it to Harrington. Now Kurtz had broken open inside early. Hill gets it outside to Swanson. That's going to be short. Rebound comes off the corner. Bulldogs have a two on one. Roberson controls it. Wanted to get it to Alexander. But he'll pull it up. Nine minutes remaining. Oh, nice crossover to Porter. By Alexander. It's a one-point game. I'll tell you, I haven't seen the dogs expend this much energy at each end of the floor. The crowd's in it now. Those dogs are back in it. Down by one. We'll be back. Spicy chicken sandwich from Carl's Jr. Make sure you have something to drink. The new Carl's Jr. Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Only 99 cents. There's a 30 second timeout. We are back to live action. And fans can't impress no state. Look at the run. 16 to 3. Bulldogs are within one. They haven't gotten over the hump yet. But Courtney Alexander with the putback has got them within a point of 61 16 and 8 30 remains. Foul from behind is Kurtz by Abney. It'll be ball out of bounds to Tulsa. This is what Tulsa has not seen. They haven't seen a hostile crowd in a tight game. And that's one of the problems you had, similar to when Jerry Tarkanian was at UNLV. And these are games that Fresno State has, has been winning for much of this season. Bulldogs have had success in post game. Kurtz again getting inside. Oh, nice little pass to shot. He comes up short. Eli with the rebound. The Bulldogs have a chance to take the lead. They dodge the bullet on that one. They're trying to post Alexander on Harrington, and there's a lot of activity down there. Alexander backs off of Harrington. Abney with another rebound. Unbelievable. He has Kirk in his career high. And what was his guys for that? He'll put it back up. The Bulldogs, their, their old nemesis, offensive rebound, and turned into a friend on that one. They had two great offensive rebounds, giving a second chance opportunity. An 18 to 3 run. Kurtz over Eli hooks it up and in, and just like that, Tulsa quiets the crowd. And Demetrius Porter, yeah, Demetrius Porter is hurt. He's trying to take a charge, I believe, on that. And, and he and Larry Abney both. They're forced to take a forced to take a 30. Porter favoring what looks like his left leg. 
They have trainer Ed Ferreira out there. And Porter, if he's not hurt, does not have to come out of the game because the Bulldogs took a timeout. It's been a terrific run for the Bulldogs, 18 to three to take the lead. Here it comes, it's Harrington. Wow. Abney sees that, you know, Harrington is just trying to take the thing over, turn the corner, looks to take the charge, doesn't get the call. He and Porter got tangled up. When they went down, each of them got hurt. Porter with five points, three assists. He hit a big three-pointer here in the second half. And the Bulldogs took that 62-61 lead. It was their first since, oh, early in the first half when they were up 14 to 12. State trying to take the lead again. Under seven and a half minutes remaining. Eli inside on Kurtz. Looks at left, right, hooks it in with the right hand. Anything you can do, I can do better. That's the same move that Kurtz hit Eli with at the other end. Bulldogs are really extending their defense now. Herons are going to be long in the three. It's an air ball, so the shot clock still goes at 17. Foley's going to be short from three. Irvin with the rebound. Also doesn't usually take this many three-pointers. Alexander, high fall away. Abney with rebound, number 21. Alexander won't miss that one, did he? Yes. But Abney took it away for Eli. Well, once again, that's Larry Abney's basket. Now, can Eli get the two points? But Larry Abney keeping it alive is the reason. 66, 63, Fresno State leads under six and a half to go. It's a 22 to 5 we're on run. Another three point attempt by Hill. In and out, rebound Eli. I really don't think that's Tulsa's game. I'm not sure that that's what Bill Self wants are all those three pointers, but the Bulldogs are really playing good defense, and that's about all they can get. Melvin Eli has 11 rebounds. He's in double figures. Yeah, and a timeout. That, so that, in front of Jerry Tarkin. That right there is a veteran coach. That's a bad possession. It was a good look by Nick Irvin. Couldn't quite get it to Courtney Alexander. The ball's picked and throws it out. Saved by Terrence Roberson. You got nothing going. Paul Cotton, settle your team down. 5.51 remaining. The Bulldogs have put together a tremendous run here. They trailed by as many as 14. Now lead by three. Now you're not going to get a much better look than that right there. Abney with the tip. There's Larry Abney. I don't know if he gets an assist. He ought to get an assist on it, if nothing else. You do not have to gain control of the basketball to be a factor under the boards. I mean, he kept it alive. He just got a little tip. This looks like the Irvin is cramping up. Yeah, it looks like he might have a stitch in his side. I don't know that Nick's had to work this hard all year. Travis DeMambi will go in for him. Nick did a real nice job while he was in there. Under six minutes left of the basketball game. The Bulldogs now have taken the lead. They want to go into Melvin Eli. They want to keep the crowd in it as well. Stepped on the end line. Out of bounds. Turnover for the first game. And after that, we have the timeout. 541 now left in the basketball game, and it has tightened up. Fresno State on a terrific run has taken the lead. Up by three. We'll be right back. Scotch Ox opens their doors for Furniture Sale 2000. From Elite, the all-leather sofa chair and love seat, only $19.99. From Bassett's bedroom collection, this beautiful queen sleigh bed is just $10.99. Our exclusive three-piece living room set with choice chair is just $10.99. Oh, and use your Gotch Ox charge card and make no payments until July 2000. The Furniture Sale 2000, now at Gotch Ox. Gotch Ox in Manchester, Fashion Fair, and Visalia. This Sunday, the Simpsons pull out all the stops to give you top-notch entertainment. Release the mangoes! The Simpsons! <laughs> Finn, want to see the underdog win? Dude, you're a cripple! Malcolm in the Middle. It all starts at 8, 7 Central, Fox Sunday. Bulldog basketball on Fox 26 is brought to you by Got Dogs. If you want to be seen, be seen in Got Dogs. Late.
later tonight, join Kristen Hoke and Eric Alvarez for the Valley's only primetime newscast. It's the right team at the right time. KFPH 10 o'clock news only on your station. KFPH Fox 26. And also, Dana Green, of course, will have the latest from the Washington Wizards. The tonight, main former Fresno State basketball star Rod Higgins, their new head coach. So stay tuned for that. It's a great night for Rod Higgins. Could be a great night for Fresno State if the Bulldogs can, can come back and hang on here and defeat the first team in the nation to win 20 games. Well, the difference in the game, believe it or not, when normally when you look at Bulldog statistics, and you see 19 offensive rebounds to 8, normally it's the opponent that has the 19. But today, 19 offensive rebounds for Fresno State, only 8 for, for Tulsa, and 10 of those 19 belong to Larry Abney, who has 21 total rebounds. Two career high for Abney. The two three-pointers by Alexander and Demetrius Porter. And believe it or not, Fresno State is out-rebounding Tulsa in this game, 44-28, to with a big difference being on the offensive end. You're right, Joe. And if they don't, they're not even in the game. So this is this is out of necessity. Larry Abbey with nearly half the team rebound. will take it himself. Did a lot of nice work one-on-one, -on -one, found an opening, put it up and in. It's a one-point Bulldog lead. Was similar to a move that he made last year in the last tournament when he was only a freshman. Travis Demandy into the game now. Reflected by Harrington and out of bounds. Bulldogs will have it with 23 on the shot clock. Demandy in briefly, goes right back to the bench as Terrence Roberson comes in. Nick Irvin remains on the bench as well. Shots of him climbing up. Uh, Bulldogs are going with their starters right now. Roberson backing out on Harrington. Dishes to Abney, can't control it. Eli can't control it. Turned over. As he heard comes out here. Uh, Terrence saw that Larry and Melvin were both open, but they just weren't ready to catch that pass. It was a short, short pass. Side goes to Coley, comes up short, Abney with rebound, number 22. He has 22 and Tulsa has 27. Who said this team can't rebound? Oh, Alexander to buys the pass. He altered the shot in there for Roberson. That's a big time shot. That's the same thing Terrence Roberson that time saw a, a, a player who was ready to catch the ball. And as you said, he double clutched the shot and beat it. 28 points in the game for Alexander. He leads all scores. Harrington hangs bodies with Alexander. Harrington gets it back with 10 on the shot clock. I'm not sure if they're trying to go to Harrington. Going inside and it worked to Kevin Johnson. And I don't know if they were trying to go to Harrington uh, to try to get... Alexander's foul because Harrington was just trying to take over. But that time it worked out for him. Melvin Eli. Over Johnson. And the other end. So Melvin Eli now has 16. To go with 11 rebounds. Now we're talking about every possession being vital. In three minutes. Johnson throws it up, can't get it. Rebound number 23. And that's what we're talking about, Ralph. If they're not being in a close game, that's not a shot that Johnson wants. They have, they have six scorers that are averaging double figures, and he's not one of them. Alexander looking at the lead. Put that out. Rebound nearly number 24 for Ab. Comes out the hill. Three play goes on the lead. Approaching two and a half minutes. Harrington for the top. Oh, Eli was mugged as he went forward by Coley. That would have been five on Coley. I believe the way the Bulldogs just have to make that. They got to get that rebound. They can't depend on Larry Abbey to get them all. Foul on Demetrius Porter. And the player is hurt over there on the other side. Maybe, yeah. is it Hill or Hurd? That's what he heard. Foul on Porter will be his. Yeah, I think he reached in trying to get a trying to get a piece of the ball, and he might have caught him across the eye. Yeah. 
yeah, right there. Up with the finger. Yeah. He just got him right in the eye. Raked him across the face. So. And what happens here is now that the trainer has come out onto the floor, he will have to be replaced. And Tulsa can replace him with anyone they want on the bench to shoot this one and one. As that foul was the seventh of the half on Fresno State. So hopefully her will be able to continue in the game after a little aid on the, on the bench. Well, what they're deciding to do now is take immediate timeout. So it'll be a full timeout as they attend to Tony Hurd. 2.20 remaining and a three-point Fresno State lead. The Golden Hurd can't be shooting free throws when we come back. We realize that not everyone has to wear a suit to the office these days. But chances are you still have to wear shoes. The men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. The supercut? It's the... My band goes on its end. The... I only take college guys. And... No. The... I hate to cover this with a football helmet. The... E equals MC squared. Whatever you call it, we can cut it at a price that looks good too. Supercut as hip as you want to be. It came from nowhere. Baptized today on the hot sands of Daytona, where a mile measures the length of your nerve. They call these giants 300. Four decades later, their fuel injected descendant has arrived. He's got some real fire in the belly. Chrysler 300M, the most powerful sports sedan in its class. I reckon I can get used to winning in this car. Chrysler 300M. Car and driver's 10 best two years running. You shouldn't have to overpay just because you're a bigger tall size. After all, life's unfair enough as it is. The men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Fans, tickets still on sale for the WAC 2000 Championship Basketball Tournament hosted by Fresno State here at Sun Arena, March 8th through the 11th. The $125 all-session passes for 14 games are available now while they last for 278 dollars. Shooting the free throws for Tulsa will be David Schultz. He's a 79 percent, so that's pretty good choice. That was a good choice. Plus, they want to get him in the game, but Tony Hurd's an 80 percent free throw shooter. The only thing here, Ralph, is that the officials decided to take the time out because he was hurt. And I'm not, I, I don't know if they have that latitude. This is the front end of the one and one rebound comes off to Courtney Alexander. So it's a three-point bulldog lead. A basket here would be huge. Two ten remaining. Rob inside the Eli, a little strong, or uh, Roberson a little strong. The rebound comes off to Abney. That'll be the That's easiest the one he had on that. And the longest one he's ever had. 24. Roberson, three. Hit the crowd's in. I know the announcers are in it. Coley, no good. Rebound Shelton. Boy, he did a lot of good work because he was out number three to one. That one got away from Courtney Alexander. Yeah, and that was tough because you had to stop it. And what I was going to say, we talked about them not being in a close game, Tulsa, and that was not really the shot they wanted. I mean, that was a quick shot off no passes. That was just take the ball down, take it yourself, and let it fly. Here you're seeing Terrence Roberson with a good look, sets himself, puts it in the bottom. Just the third three-pointer of the game for Fresno State. And at the other end, the bounce finds Shelton in the right place at the right time. He gets it over three Bulldogs to put it up and in and make it a four-point game. Right, it's a four-point game, but you have 35 on the shot clock with minute 40 to go. So you're talking about three possessions left in this game if you utilize it right. However you must get a score in this possession in order to be able to run the clock. Tulsa's going full, see if they double. The big quarter frees everybody else, says, I can handle this and bring it across. And, and then they have left the double team. Oh, that cut off the hurt, so they'll run some more clock. Well, you know, he's missed some easy shots. Four of 12. That could have been a, maybe a pretty smart move, but you saw the Bulldogs 
running their offense against the pressure that they had practiced yesterday. Well, here's a guy who lost the ball in this situation, but he gets a five-second count. Looks right at the official, and it's a turnover for Fresno State. First day. That is a costly turnover as Alexander was just beginning his drive. Second five-second call of the night against the Right, and that's what's difficult. That is a judgment call by the official. If he thinks he's with it slipping, he keeps the count off. Nearly turned over. And he'll get the hand. Now left to play a four-point bulldog lead. Shelton banging inside, draws the foul as he went over Eli. Yeah. He was going to take that ball to the basket. I think Melvin's hands just came straight in. You're allowed the plane directly up. And I think you'll see Melvin Eli just reaches a little bit right there. He reaches in. He has to have his hands straight up. And that's what Danny Tarkanian is yep. telling the official right in front of us right now. And I think, you know, most kids think their hands are up, but you can see on the replay he did lean in just the ball. Eli has to leave the basketball game. Now he has fouled out with five and a low drop with 16 points. Also, 11 rebounds. So a double-double tonight for Melvin Eli. I'm going to have to look at my stats. I think whenever Melvin Eli scores 15 points a more, Bulldogs are going to do pretty well. And down the stretch, Melvin Eli was a good part of the Bulldogs offense. Shelton will hear it from the fans as he steps to the line. He quiets the crowd. He had missed the last one when he, when he uh, substituted for Hurd. But as you said, he's a 79 percent free throw shooter. Makes them both. So after the Bulldogs open the six-point lead, we have four unanswered points from Tulsa. Golden Hurricane within two. Down to add with 13 game winning streak. Bulldogs need points out of this possession and a foul for Foley and he is gone. Uh, right there. That's not a real good foul, only because of where it was on the floor. In order to be you don't want like Courtney Alexander with the ball, obviously. But he had forced him out so far that it probably would have been better had he just let him catch the ball. Now you have Courtney Alexander going to the line uh, for a one and one with the Bulldogs up two, 42.1 seconds to go. Coley, who averages 11 points a game, leaves with only seven out of the five fouls. And Bill Self is taking this opportunity. You have 30 seconds to put in a player when someone fouls out. He's taking the opportunity to use it on the 30 seconds timeout, gather his guys around, he told them, here's the coming score. You know, down two, they're on the line for a one and one. Here's what we want to do if he misses. Here's what we want to do if we're down three. Here's what we're going to need to do if we're down four. It's, it's situation basketball now. And he replaces the 6-5 Foley with the 5-10 Dante Swanson, who also happens to be a 91% free throw shooter. Alexander looking for a 34 He misses the front end of the one and one. That's happened too often for Fresno State. Now Tulsa with a chance to tie or take the lead. Who does need a spot? Here it is. Just goes to himself. He's, he's the point guard. A lot of confidence, and he just goes to himself in this situation. Harris shot just, blocks off. Who goes to get the last shot? Just six points in the game, and a timeout called by President. Six points in the game for Harrington. 21.5 seconds remaining. 73-73. Last shot time for Fresno State. Yeah, and you're in a great position here because you know, if you hold for the last shot, the worst you have is overtime. Yeah, pretty much you're looking at winner tie right here. Uh, you, you can see on this last play here, Harry, could they run that same play where they run the, the high pick and roll, roll the guy down, bring the other, go, uh, other post player up. This time, Harrington just decides he's going to take it himself. And he does. Here's another look at it. Larry Abney hedges on the screen. Demetrius comes over to stop him. Nice spin move by Harrington. Puts the ball up with his left hand. And Tulsa was in that position after, uncharacteristically, uh, Courtney Alexander missed the front end of a one and one. He's had 28 points tonight. As you take a look at Brandon Kurtz into the game for Tulsa. Bulldogs will go with Porter and Irvin. 
And it'll be interesting here to see if Tulsa just plays it straight or if they try to trap. The other five, Abney, Roberson, and Alexander. Tulsa has one timeout. Bulldogs are out of time. He's a tough matchup. He's a lot bigger, but you can see Tulsa's guys are really looking to help. That's the game clock at the bottom of the screen. Porter. And a timeout called immediately by Tulsa. They use their last. Seven points in the game for Demetrius Porter. He's in two huge baskets. A three-pointer and that one in the second half. And he hit another shot like that where he spun in lane and made that shot. That's a shot for the people around in Fresno, especially in Easton, saw him make many times at Washington Union. Creates a little space, and it's kind of a, a step-back shot. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. Bob Demetrius Porter, when he made that shot, you were talking about the first half. I thought he was trying to pass and just alter his shot. But uh, you're he, telling me he has this he shot. He does this. He does it often in practice. He's done it before in games. And, and I think when he penetrated into the lane route, that's what he was looking for. Harrington was looking for himself on the last one. I think Demetrius was looking here. Now what you want to do is make sure that you don't give up an open look, pick up the dribble to make the shot clock start or the game clock start, and then not give an open three, and of course, no foul. Parents in a hurry it up the floor. His stop for three. Rebound, corner, and off his place.